Hey there, so my name is Vichurch Muthumani and my team's project is Artificial Bee Colony op Optimization. Alright, so let's get started with this Artificial Bee Colony Optimization, shall we? See ya! Okay, so what is this Artificial Bee Colony see, Optimization algorithm? Of course, it is an optimization which we do by using this optimization algorithm. And the important thing is this has been inspired by the foot searching that is done by bees in a colony, all right? So how bees go about and search and find food, right? That is the inspiration for this algorithm. <laughs> you know, like once again, the bees over there. The next thing is, so where do our bees live? Bees live in a colony, all right? So the bees live in a colony and the bees, they leave the colony and they go out and they search for food. Right? Okay, and you know there's an example of food over there. It's a flower. Alright, so now, great. So bees leave the colony to search for food. It's all fine and dandy, but why do we care about this? Right? So why do we care what bees do? <laughs> that is the big question. Why do we care? We care because our bees, our tiny little bees, they are solving an optimization problem. And what is this optimization problem that they are trying to solve? They are trying to solve the optimization problem of finding the best source of food for the colony. So their optimization problem is finding the best food source. Alright. So it also turns out that our bees are really smart and they are able to find these optimal solutions like, you know, really very well. So that leads us now to the point that Hey, maybe we can learn something from these tiny bees, right? And if we can learn how they solve their optimization uh, of, you know, trying to find out these best food sources and do the optimization for that, maybe we could learn some of their tricks and we could use that to solve our own optimization problems. And this, my friends, this is the reason why we care about this and why we have this algorithm, right? So this is the motivation for it. So now that we want to learn from the bees how they do an optimal search for food, so let's see the steps. So here you have a couple of bees on the screen. They live in a colony and you have a couple of food sources. The value of the food sources is a reflection of the fact how much food is available at those sources. So like a value of say seven indicates that you got seven flowers from which you can get food or extract food, all right? Okay. The first thing that happens is known as the exploration phase or the phase of the scout. What happens here is a couple of random bees, they go about exploring from the colony in search of food sources. So the first bee, he has, you know, locked on to value two, both the flowers and the second bee, he goes zigzagging and he finds the single flower with the value one. Once they find out uh, their food sources, these bees, they transition to the next stage, which is known as exploitation stage. In this stage, the bees start to harvest the food from the food sources, all right? So when they are done with that, they have to return back to the beehive. And upon return to the beehive, they will do a dance, which is known as a waggle dance. So look at the bee at value two. He's going back and he does a waggle dance. Same goes for the other bee. Okay, so what these guys convey by the waggle dance is, uh, how much food is available where they are exploited it. So the remaining bees, right, they will look at the waggle dances and they will judge based on the information from the dances, which source of food is better. And uh, you know, like naturally these bees are smart. They will choose to follow the bee from the food source, which has more value. Here in our case it would be, you know, source two. In this way, we get a sense of uh, reinforcement or feedback. This feedback makes sure that uh, those paths with richer food sources get more feedback. They get reinforced more and more. And that's exactly what we will see in the slide. All right. So yeah, the bees go back and the remaining bees, they go to the food source of value two. All right. Look at them all go over there. <laughs> all right. Okay. So now as you can see that all the bees are centered around value two. If there are too many bees at a source, they will not be able to exploit the food fully, right? So some of the bees, they 
transition back to the state of a scout and they do exploring once again and these bees go about exploring and they find a new source and they start to do their exploitation here once again so when some uh, say sources of food have started to lose resources like some of the worker bees they go back to the colony and they start to wait so these two guys return back to the colony to wait now what happens is the bee uh, who is at the food source of value 7 right he returns back with this new updated information does a waggle dance to tell these guys hey you know what there is a more uh, uh, say like uh, so there is a source of food of value 7 if you guys follow me we can go exploit it so these bees they look at the waggle dance and they follow him alright and they go to exploit the say the food source of value 7 so this is the gist of how the bee colony optimization works now that you have an uh, intuition of how the algorithm is going to run let's get into the details this algorithm basically consists of four phases the initialization phase foraging bee phase onlooker bee phase and finally scout bee phase beginning with the initialization phase we initialize bees across the solution space randomly and we assign fitness to each position which is analogous to the quality of food the bees are looking for and bees always look for the best quality of food and uh, we update the position of the bees using uh, this formula you can see here um, xij is nothing but the jth component of ith b and phi ij is a random variable which basically controls the food sources nearby uh, xij and as you can see as the bees converge eventually uh, the step size uh, of the updation keeps getting smaller which ensures convergence which is a good thing in a op optimization algorithm this uh, uh, update e uh, equation is basically uh, meant is meant for the bees to explore around and uh, once the exploration is done one step of exploration is done they um, ass they assess if the new fitness value is better uh, then they stay there or they go back to their initial position now uh, moving on to the onlooker bee phase now that the foraging bee uh, bees have gone and explored possible solutions they come back to the hive and they communicate with onlooker bees so as to recruit them uh, and uh, recruit them and uh, send them to these uh, possible solutions they do this by communicating by uh, waggle dance which is a dance uh, that bees do to notify onlooker bees about the possible locations of good food sources and now onlooker bees also go to the solutions um, based on the onlooker bees select the onlooker bees select the uh, solution that they want to go to uh, proportionate to the fitness which is essentially the same as roulette wheel selection that we've seen in genetic algorithms here also uh, onlooker bees um, keep their uh, current uh, position if the new position's fitness is worse than the one they have or update to the new solution if they find a better um, a higher fitness solution every uh, solution has a trial counter associated with it uh, so that if a bee doesn't update its uh, solution for a certain amount of cycles then it has to uh, discard that position and go to a new position it's basically like mutation in genetic algorithms so the number of cycles that you have to wait before you discard it is a parameter in this algorithm called limit and it's up completely up to uh, us to decide how we want to uh, how far we want to wait before we discard a solution and once we decide that uh, we can uh, once we decide that the uh, and a solution does stay the same for a certain number of cycles we we convert that onlooker bee into a scout bee which is the third phase in this algorithm and the scout bee randomly migrates to a new solution 
please feel free to pause the video and have a look at the pseudocode for a better understanding of the algorithm. There are some functions that we plan to test with our B-Colony optimization. First function is this multimodal landscape. The next function we test is a wicked function called the rastrogen. It has, it's shaped like a boat but with a lot of local traps. So our B-Colony has to make its way not into any of these local minima traps but into the global minima. That's the challenge. Actually, the bottom line is this. B colony optimization has to find the value of the global lowest point or the valley, the lowest value in all these functions.